What's up traders, Anthony Crudelli here and welcome to this week's episode of Develop Your Edge. In today's show, I'll be speaking with performance coach, Steven Goldstein. And in my final thoughts, you know I love to talk about Bollinger Bands. I'm gonna show you some things I'm seeing right now on the E-mini S&P, NASDAQ and Russell on the daily charts. But before we get Steven on the line, getting a ton of new traders to Develop Your Edge every week, thank you so much for tuning into the show. Been getting a lot of questions about an introduction to futures. You can go to activetrader.cmegroup.com and on the home page there, a great video on the introduction to futures. Hang tight while we get Steven on the line. Steven, how you doing, my friend? Uh, yep, yep. Great to be here. Great to be here, Anthony. Thank you so much for joining me today. A couple things I want to talk to you about. Fantastic job lately with the podcast too. Really enjoying them and love a lot of the things you put out on Twitter as well. And a couple of things that you put out on Twitter, uh, I want to talk about today. Two things that you and I agree on, and I think pretty controversial out there with some of the other traders. The first thing I want to talk about is that we as traders are the actual edge. And I learned this because I came from the floor and I was surrounded by all these great traders trying to be like these other traders, failed miserably, lost a bunch of money. Then I finally realized that I had to build my own strategy that fit my personality, no two traders alike. And then along that road, along that journey, I realized that I am actually my edge. And I realized when I was watching all these other traders, they were their edge. You feel the same way. Oh yes, 100%, 100%. You know, it's, um, you know, I, I tell people, trade your personality. Your personality is your edge. You are your edge and you're also your enemy. You know, it's this is the nature of trading. You, you're not competing against anybody else. You know, the market is the field. That's all it is. It's not competing against you. You're not competing against it. OK, but you're trying to bring the best of yourself. It's probably the only one of the only activities in the world where you are against that field on your own and you're trying to beat yourself and you're trying to use your skills and your advantages to be your edge and you're also your enemy. You're also um, uh, the person who's going to undermine you at times. Yeah, and, and that's something that I think that we as traders, we don't learn that right away. That's something no. that takes time. Talk to the traders out there about what you would, what you would say are really the steps to, to getting to the point of actually understanding that and actually embracing that. Yeah, well, it's. I suppose it's. Um, it, it goes back a little bit to that we come into trading with the wrong view to start with. We come into That's trading right. thinking that there's a a way to do it, that there is, you know, a, a formula, uh, an equation, and we just need to learn that. Yes. So we don't think our personality really matters, you know. And then you 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 know you you look at other guys around you and you go, I'm going to try and do what he does because that works. Yeah. But, he does something which suits him that he's crafted and learned over time. And, and we take those first learning experiences and it's, it's like starting by taking other people's, you know, tailor-made suit. It's not going to fit you. It's not going to be a perfect fit, even if it's close. And, and, and that's where your personality comes in. And, and I don't know if you can see a little bit, it's quite ironic because on the right, there's a, an image you could just see. Um, that's part of a, uh, a diagram that I use when I, I, I assess people's risk personalities. And I find that it's not what your risk personality is that defines your success. It's how you apply it. Are you working in a way that is congruent for you? Are you working with the markets that in a way that suits you? Because if you are, then you've got an edge. If you're not, you're fighting against yourself. No, you explained that beautifully. And and that really brings me to the next thing I want to talk about, and that is coaching. You're a performance coach. And I saw a tweet you put out, I don't know, sometime in the past month or so, and somebody was pushing back on something saying uh, that if that trader was so great, why do they need coaching? And I can tell everybody right now, looking at the camera, I'm 21 years into this, and I would take coaching from Steven and many other people out there because I think that this is such an important point I want to talk about here, and that is there is no finish line in trading. You don't 
try to do, eventually become a great trader. It is about constantly getting better. And in my career, it's been like this, and I'm always trying to just get to that next higher level. And a big part of what pushed me through uh, when you get to a point where you, you believe you are your edge is coaching. And it, it could be from someone like you, it could be from another trader, but having that ability to, to take that coaching I mean, look at Tom Brady, look at all the, look at Michael Jordan, how many of these great athletes, and I like to compare us to athletes, they didn't get to where they were to their absolute greatest point until they had the right coach. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a great story. I'll come on to traders in a minute, but there's a great story, which I read many years ago in the New, in the New Yorker um, about uh, a basketball player. Now, obviously, basketball is not our sport over here, but it, this really struck me. It was about someone who's, who's a pretty controversial figure by the name of Kermit Washington. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was in the 70s. Um, I, I think he played played for the LA Lakers. And, you know, uh, a, a tall guy had all the physical attributes, had come through the school college system, made it to the LA Lakers, was getting some, uh, some, some playing time. But he, he, he kind of reached a ceiling so and he was slowly starting to get less and less playing time and I, in the story he tells it of a time he was he was knocked over by someone during a game and this guy went you better learn to play the game otherwise you're not going any further just you know a bit of banter with him and at that time nba players didn't have personal coaching they had um they had coaching for you know fitness and maybe strategy but no one had personal coaching. And he went away and he thought about this. And he said, you know, I need to get someone to help me work on my game. So he actually approached a very famous college coach and said, any chance you could work with me, you know, to help me improve my game. And the college coach kind of laughed and he went, you know, NBA guys don't have coaching. And he was going, no, serious. I, I, I you know, I, I need this. And, and the coach said, well, I'm going to put you through your paces. We're going to do it at six o'clock in the morning. I want to, you know, no NBA player gets up at six in the morning, you know, and we're going to do that on your days off. And, and, and that would tell me whether you were serious about this or not. And he did. And he, he, he spent time working with his coach. And over the months, he got better and better. And he started getting more and more game time. And slowly, the other players around him started noticing the improvement. And they, they asked him what's going on. And he said, well, I'm working with this coach. And of course, they were dismissed it at first, you know. But then slowly, they started having this coach. Now, now the writer of the article, who's James Surawiki, said that was the turning point for coaching in sport. Mid-70s, he was the first person who ever went into that. And that kind of started a revolution, which is still going on today. Because you wouldn't have someone in sport at any level who doesn't have personal coaching. You know, the, the higher up they go, the more coaching they have. Now, I'll come back to my story very quickly. I was a trader in the 90s, 80s, 90s, and I was approached by the, the bank I worked at in an experiment. Steve, we're going to try a coach here. Will you work with him? And I'm like, hey, I don't need coaching. You know, I'm a trader. I've got an ego. You know what we're like. Are you mad? You know, people are going to laugh at me if they find out. Anyway, they, they twisted my arm. And that changed the trajectory of my trading career. My trading just took off in a whole new direction for the next 10 years. Um, if, in fact, I don't think I was a good trader till then. I think I'd survived. But after that, I became a good trader. And that's the same story I've heard from many people I work I work with. You know, and, and in other words, the people I work with, they're champions. They come to me because they want to get better. Yeah. And, and that's what, I, you know, when, when someone asked, well, if he's so good, why does he have, you know, coaching? Yeah. You wouldn't ask that of Roger Federer. Exactly. You know, so, or any sports person. Yeah. I mean, there's a big difference, everybody, between edge and ego. And this business, you can't have an ego. I'm always open to learning more. And I also think an important point when it comes to coaching is you can only push yourself so far. You know, I've pushed myself to the limits. And yeah. in those limits, uh, whether you think you have them or not, sometimes internally you can only go so far without somebody there pushing you. 
Just think about a workout. You can go and try to work out as hard as you want, but when somebody else is training you, how much further they push you into different areas that you didn't think about, to me, that is so important as a trader, as a growth, to become that, that overall trader. Stephen, like I said, it's, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Tell everybody, I mentioned the podcast at the beginning, where they can learn more about the podcast and all the cool stuff you've been doing uh, lately on social media. Okay, so, so it's the Alpha Mind podcast. And it's, it's on all the regular regular sites. We're starting to roll it out on YouTube. And we, we have interviews, conversations with people from the financial markets, but about performance, about personal performance. So we speak to traders such as yourself. Um, we speak to um, a lot of coaches and psychologists. We've had Denise on as well. Um, and we speak to authors. We've had Jack Shager on. Um, we've had uh, Morgan Housel, uh, Annie Duke. Um, Gary Klein. So we talk about a lot of people who focus on behavior, performance, growth, development. Um, and we've had analysts, you know, I mean, a- anyone that can add some sort of value to the debate about uh, trader performance in some way. Um, and we, we, we do some stuff. We've got a newsletter. Um, I've I got my website, which is Alpha R Cubed. That, that's my company where I do coaching. Um, I'm an executive coach as well. Um, and that's my style. I'm not, I'm not a strategy coach. I'm not someone who's going to tell someone, you know, uh, it, it, teach them a method or a technique. You know, most people have got a strategy. They just need some structure. So, you know, that's kind of the areas that I work on the human side of performance. Yeah, love the show. Been really tuned in, tuning into a lot of great episodes lately. Stephen, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolute pleasure. You take care. Hang tight, traders. I'll be right back with my final thoughts. 24-7 access to diverse global markets. Right here. That's why I added stock index futures to my trading strategy. Now when I see ups and downs coming, I'm ready. Well played. Why trade with TradeStation? It's innovative, easy to use, and totally freaking sweet. With powerful tools to track and execute your trades and low per trade commissions on stocks, futures, and options. Upgrade your trade at TradeStation.com. Final thoughts for today, traders. Really enjoyed my conversation with Steven. Remember, you are your edge. And don't be afraid of coaching. There's a big difference between edge and ego, especially in trading. Now, let's go to the charts. You guys know I love to talk about Bollinger Bands. That's the primary indicator for my strategy. And I want to show you something on the Bollinger Bands that I pulled up on TradeStation for the S&P and NASDAQ, the E-mini markets on the daily. And, you know, one of the reasons why I really believe in just finding one strategy that you like and just getting better and better at executing it is you find these little different things about it to help you become a better executor of that strategy. And what I want to show you is, you know how I talk about how when the Bollinger Bands make peaks and then uh, that's when the market's going to draw lines. Remember, you can download my indicator for free. And then when they start to expand again, anytime that the market's expanding or the Bollinger Bands are expanding and the market's going in the direction of that top or bottom Bollinger Band, right now we're seeing it higher, that I want to stay in that direction and I don't want to fade it. Well, What's interesting here is, and I always keep a close eye on this, is that you have this big move up in NASDAQ, Bollinger Band spiked, then the NASDAQ came back down, Bollinger Band came down, bottom one's just kind of sitting there, not really doing much. But now, as we started to come back up, that Bollinger Band took out that previous high peak. Same thing in the S&P. S&P, Bollinger Band keeps going up. So what does that tell me? It tells me that we're getting ready to get boxed in. I'm not saying the rally is over, what I'm saying is, is that at least for now, and this could change on any given day, it could be a day where we just spike up and start going back up with the Bollinger Band. But you're not seeing us riding that top Bollinger Band right now. We're starting to come back in. We've been reverting back in. And maybe those Bollinger Bands start to, to turn back in, which means we'll get new levels on my indicator. And I think it's more of a two-way market. I'll still be more bullish. I've talked about this week in, week out, whether it's on Develop Your Edge or Futures Radio Show. But that's something I'm noticing. It's just divergence. It's not something that we're seeing uh, in other markets. And I want to show you what I mean is look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin continues to go higher. 
with the top Bollinger band. Okay, don't fade that thing. <laughs> and it's just my thought process, right? And go to the Russell. Russell continues to go higher near the top Bollinger band. Those two markets are holding uh, uh, near their top band. And as they're breaking out going higher, they're going up with the Bollinger band. Not the same case for the NASDAQ and the S&P. Like I said, it's, I'm not really, I'm not telling you what to think about any of these markets. I'm teaching you how I think and why I like to focus in on having my one strategy and just get better and better at executing it. Remember traders, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. You could also follow me on Twitter at Anthony Crudelli. And don't forget to check out Instagram at Anthony C. Crudelli. That's a wrap for today. See you next week.